Thanks for joining us. I'm here with Matt McCall of Penn Financial Group, talking about stocks, talking about investing. Markets broken down into about nine or maybe ten sectors broadly, and uh, you like to sector invest with ETFs. I do. I mean, we use a top-down approach, so we start very macro and work it down. A lot of times you can go all the way down to an individual stock, but if you like a sector, sometimes it's just best to stop there. Uh, regional banks is a sector that I like. Uh, there's an ETF out there that we have, uh, IAT, it's the iShares Regional Bank. The reason I like that is on the verge of breaking out. I mean, we're very close to a multi-year high. If it breaks out, I love that. Fundamentally, when interest rates go up, it actually helps the regional banks because the margins are better in their loans. And if you have big, bigger margins, what's that mean? More profit on the bottom line, which right. means higher stock prices. So regional banks, one second. You've got the KRE, which also does kind Very of the similar. same thing, right? Yep. So regional banks, yeah, as long-term rates where they lend go higher and short-term rates stay low where they borrow, it's the fabled catbird season. Ex exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, energy, been hated, universally hated. Oil is almost uh, up 50% though yeah. from its lows earlier this year, kind of silently, nobody yeah. wants to talk about that. Where do you see like XLE or something like that? You know, the bigger names like that I think will hold up better if we do have any, a pullback in, in energy going forward just because big dividend players, uh, I like a BP which is in there, you know, pays about a 6% dividend. Right. Um, but I think your upside is limited as far as oil is concerned. I think we probably top out around the mid 60s uh, as far as oil price, but I think we fell in the bottom. We're not gonna go back to the low 40s, but we could be in a trading range for quite some time. I would play it though with the XLE, the bigger names, because as you sit and wait for the next breakout, you're getting paid a nice dividend. A lot of these companies are, are built up, even though they cut capex spending, they're not, they didn't borrow. Uh, like some of these small names borrowed so much, they're shutting down wells, that hurts them directly. Sure, uh, it could be some acquisitions too that help yes. that. that uh, healthcare, everybody's getting older, they want to stay younger, they want new drugs from uh, like, like Huey Lewis, you know, biotechnology, <laughs> you, you, need, you, know, you need the uh, J&Js and stuff like that, yep. do you like healthcare? So biotech is an area I absolutely love, and it's another sector that people have been calling for the bubble for every time it pulls back for, for two days we hit the bubble. I like SBIO, it's a, a small cap, mid cap biotech companies between 200 million and 5 billion and they have at least one or two drugs in phase two or phase three. These are the ones that are getting acquired, big right. names coming in, get, buying their R&D, also huge upside. If you're gonna cure cancer, they're coming from one of these small companies. So uh, IBB would work out too, wouldn't it? That's, Absolutely, that's, like yeah, that's, that's the bigger names. I mean, you could actually own both, because one's gonna cover the very large cap names, the SBIO is gonna be more small mid cap names. So think about some biotechnology for your portfolio, some energy, and what else we got going for us here? We've biotech, got biotech, biotech energy, uh, regional banks. Regional banks, you got it all. Thanks a lot, Matt Thank McCall you. from Penn Financial Group.